Hi everybody, Captain Al speaking with your training tips designed to help make you a better, more knowledgeable flight swimmer, pilot, or aviation enthusiast. Let's strap in and lower the HUD and see what is on the horizon for today. Our briefing today will cover the electrical system of the Boeing 747-400 and Boeing 747-8. What we'll cover in the electrical system is AC power distribution, DC power distribution, and the standby power system. The electrical system for the most part is uh, all automatic with the exception of uh, external and APU power and isolating non-normals. Electrical faults are detected and isolated, most of them automatic. Uh, sometimes you have to take action on that electrical panel via a non-normal procedure. And the electrical system controls and indicators are located on the overhead panel and the electrical synoptic. The overhead panel on the uh, left side of the overhead panel is primarily an AC depiction of the electrical system it really does not show DC power depiction at all. Uh, the electrical overhead panel consists of alternate action switches and momentary action switches. There are also rotary switches for the APU and standby power system. For AC power, we can uh, AC power can be provided from ground power sources external 1 and external 2, or APU 1 and APU 2. If ground power is hooked up, you'll have to have two carts and then uh, two receptacles plugged into external 1 and 2. If you start the APU, you'll automatically get the uh, APU generation system uh, from the APU to hook up to get uh, AC power on the ground. There are four integrated drive generators, or IDGs, for uh, systems 1, 2, 3, and 4. And there are four generator control breakers, uh, also for systems 1, 2, 3, and 4. The ground handling bus is a bus that's powered on the ground only. It can be powered through external 1 or APU 1. If both are available, its preference will be external 1. The ground handling bus powers things like the lower lobe cargo doors, the lower lobe cargo handling equipment, and lights, the fueling panel, and the uh, aux uh, hydraulic pump number four. All powered by the ground handling bus cannot be powered in the air. There also is a bus called the ground service bus this can be powered on the ground or in flight. It's normally powered by AC1. And the ground service bus will power things like the main and APU battery chargers, fuel pumps for APU start, the flight deck floodlights, navigation and service lights, and miscellaneous service outlets. If AC1 is not available on the ground, you can power the ground service bus from the same source that is powering the ground handling bus, which is external one or APU one. And you can do that through a ground service switch that's located on a passenger airplane. It's located at uh, usually door two left where there is a, a ground service switch. And on a freighter, it'll be located on the uh, back in the uh, main cabin area on the upper deck. Uh, and pushing that switch will allow the ground service bus to be powered from the same source that's powering the ground handling bus. This is convenient so that cleaners can come in and plug their vacuum cleaners in and, and they'll be able to push that ground service switch. And as long as you have the uh, external power, for example, external one hooked up, then they're going to be able to service the airplane. For the captain's and first officer's flight instruments, these uh, group of instruments are protected by uh, what are called instrument transfer buses. 
The captain's flight instrument transfer bus is normally on AC bus 3. The first officer's uh, flight instrument transfer bus is uh, powered from AC 2. And the backup for both of these instrument transfer buses is AC 1. So if the captain's flight instrument transfer bus were to, if AC 3 were to fail, it would automatically switch to AC 1. And if the first officer's flight instrument transfer bus, which is powered by AC2, were to fail, then again that would also be transferred to AC1. Uh, both of them could be transferred to AC1 at the same time. On the overhead electrical panel, on the left uh, upper portion of the panel, there is a standby power selector. It has three positions has uh, off, auto, and battery. When the switch is in the off position, the uh, standby uh, AC bus and the APU standby bus cannot be powered at all. Off is off. When it's in battery, that allows the battery to power the uh, standby AC bus and the APU uh, standby bus. And the battery chargers would be cut out of the loop and so the battery would power these buses directly in the battery position or in the bat position. In the auto position, that provides for automatic transfer to keep the standby AC bus and the EPU standby bus powered in the event of failure. In the auto position, the normal power source for the standby AC bus would be AC3. And if AC3 were to fail, then the standby bus would be powered by AC1 through the ground service bus, through the battery charger, through the main hot battery bus, through a standby inverter, and then it would power the standby uh, AC bus. You'll notice it has to take a route there. AC1, we said, normally does power the ground service bus, and the ground service bus will power the battery chargers and then the chargers, of course, will power the main hot battery bus. And then that is DC power at that time. That DC has to be converted into AC, so it goes through a standby inverter, and then that can power the standby AC bus. The standby AC bus kind of will uh, protect essential equipment uh, required for flight. If AC3 and AC1 fail, then the main battery will take over and power the main hot battery bus. Again, that's DC power, so it has to go through an inverter to convert that DC to AC. And then that uh, once it does that, it can power the standby AC bus. So with that switch in auto, it kind of goes from AC3. If AC3 fails to AC1. If AC1 fails, the main battery will power the uh, standby uh, bus. Now, this is kind of known as an essential power bus. Um, if you're interested in what particular buses power what, you can always look in the uh, PMDG electrical section of the Flight Crew Operation Manual. And although that manual is old, uh, the information is still fairly accurate as to what powers what uh, through that manual. Here's a, a schematic representation of the electrical system for the 747-400 and 747-8. Uh, you can see going from the top, we have the uh, ground handling bus. We said the ground handling bus can be powered by uh, external one uh, or APU one. And when either one of those are available, and when you see the avail light, it simply means that the Frequency and volts are good. They're acceptable. Uh, either one of these are available. It'll power the ground handling bus. If both are available, again, external one is the preference. Uh, on some airplanes, primarily the uh, freighter airplanes, you have a main deck uh, cargo handling bus. This is powered by APU2 or external 2 and that has to be available and not selected in order for it to power the main deck cargo handling bus. This is what handles most of the uh, cargo equipment on the main deck. Then you'll notice that there's uh, 
one, two, three, four IDGs, or integrated drive generators. An integrated drive generator is simply a generator and a constant speed drive in one unit. It's got its own oil supply. And so the advantage to this is it's very easy to maintain because if there's a problem with it, maintenance can pull the whole unit out and then replace it with a new IDG unit instead of having to disconnect the C CSD from the generator. And it's all one unit, so there's an ease of maintenance in changing this thing out. The IDG will, uh, when the engine is turning, will provide the generation power in order to power the respective AC bus 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when the integrated drive generator is up to speed, there'll be a generator control breaker that will close, allowing power to come from the uh, generator 1 to the AC bus 1. AC bus 1 then in turn will go through a bus tie breaker. The bus tie breaker will close automatically and will provide power to a synchronous bus. And the synchronous bus will be separated by a split system breaker as necessary for unlike power sources. So if you have, uh, for example, if you have external one on the left side of the synchronous bus and you have external two on the right side of the synchronous bus, the split system breaker would open up because these are not like power sources. They would be different in some respects and so the split system breaker would open automatically. But if you have all four IDGs operating, meaning all four engines are operating, then the power can be synchronized and the split system breaker will close because these are all in phase with each other and the whole bus can be synchronized at that point and the SSB, the split system breaker, will close at that point. The bus tie breakers are controlled on the electrical panel. You can see here is an excerpt of the overhead electrical panel. And when these switches are all in the automatic mode, that, that allows for automatic operation of the uh, respective bus tie breaker. The only time the bus tie breaker would close is if there's some kind of fault that would isolate uh, that AC power from the sync bus and uh, allow the AC bus to be uh, take care of its own fault and then the generator control breaker would probably also open up to isolate that AC bus and that happens all automatically if there's a uh, if there's a fault. So again there's a ground handling bus external 1 APU 1 main deck handling bus external 2 or APU 2 and the uh, four IDGs or integrated drive generators will power the AC buses through a generator control breaker, generator control switch it's sometimes called. And then from there the AC power will go through a bus tie breaker to give power to the synchronous bus. And when, like, and when like power sources are on the synchronous bus, then the SSB will automatically close. If like power is uh, not on the synchronous bus, like with external and APU, any combination of this, you could have APU1 and external 2 hooked up and the SSB would open. You could have APU1 and APU2 hooked up and the SSB would be open because these cannot be synchronized. But the four IDGs can be synchronized. Going down from there, you have uh, AC bus 1, 2, 3, and 4. You can see AC bus 1 does power the ground service bus. The AC buses will also, through a transformer rectifier, uh, switch that AC power to DC power, and then that will power a DC bus 1, 2, 3, and 4. There are uh, DC uh, tie breakers, uh, which are called DCIRs, DC isolation relays. There's four of these, one for each DC bus and these will hook up the respective DC buses to a DC tie bus. These are also dependent on these bus tie switches. With the bus tie switches in auto, the DC IRs are automatically closed and they're ready to operate. When you have AC power, the AC goes through the TR, is converted to DC, 
and then DC power will, uh, because these breakers are automatically closed, the DC uh, bus will then power the DC tie bus. If you take these bus tie switches and take them out of auto, you're not only opening the AC bus tie breaker, but you will also automatically open the DC IRs as well. So these switches have to be in auto in order for the DC IRs to be closed. You'll notice that the main standby bus and the APU standby bus are normally powered from AC3. And there's the representation via schematic of AC bus 3 powering the main standby bus, AC bus 3 powering the APU standby bus. AC3 also uh, will power the captains and the flight instrument transfer buses. But again, if these fail, the first officer's transfer bus uh, will automatically go to uh, AC1 and the captain's flight instrument transfer bus which is powered by AC3 will also go to AC1. These switches would respectively close if there was a failure of AC bus 3 and then these buses uh, would be powered from AC1. Uh, again like we said both of them can switch to AC1 if needed to protect those buses which have the group of uh, instruments that represent the captain's instruments and the first officer's instruments. Then with a standby bus you can see that here's that representation of power that we talked about. If uh, Remember that switch if it was an auto it went from AC3 to AC1 if AC3 failed. And if uh, the power then would go from AC bus 1 to the ground service bus, to the main battery charger, to the main hot battery bus, through the battery switch, to the main standby inverter, and then that power would be then converted uh, with the DC power converting back to AC power to power the main standby bus. So we're kind of going from AC to DC back to AC to power this bus. Same thing with the APU uh, AC1 through the ground service bus, through the APU battery charger, through the APU hot battery bus, uh, through the battery contactor, through the APU standby inverter where it goes from again AC to DC back to AC to power the AC APU standby bus. You'll notice I have a representation here of DC-3 too. DC-3 will normally power the main battery bus and the APU battery bus. They are powered by DC-3 and AC, um, the hot battery buses are powered from AC-1. So you've got really four battery buses, the main and the APU battery bus, the hot battery buses, and the main and the APU battery buses. The battery bus is powered by DC-3. The main and APU hot battery bus is powered by AC-1. Here's a look at the overhead panel on the 747-400. The Dash 8 looks identical. And starting from the bottom here, you have the IDGs uh, for engines 1, 2, 3, and 4, the integrated drive generators. These are uh, momentary action switches. Uh, they have a drive light within them. The drive light would represent low oil pressure or uh, high oil temperature within the IDG. And uh, if we had to, by checklist, uh, take action on a uh, high temperature, let's say in flight, of the oil supply of the IDG, we'd have to lift the guard and push the switch. These guards are normally uh, safety wired, so you'd have to break the safety wire, lift the guard, push the switch, it momentarily stays in, and then pops right back out. There is no on and off position, that's why it's called momentary action. And uh, this would allow the um, IDG to disconnect uh, from, the, uh, from the engine, basically, if there's a problem with it. Then moving up, there's uh, the four generator control breakers or generator control switches. 
These are alternate action switches. They have an on and off position. When the switch is in the on position, uh, the generator control breaker is armed to operate automatically. The off light would represent that the generator control breaker is open. And so right now, this is a representation of uh, being on the ground and the uh, GCBs are at this point open. Power is not being provided from the IDG to the AC bus. And so the GCB is open. The GCB will close automatically when the IDG comes up to speed. Then the generator control breaker will close and allow that IDG to power um, the generator through the GCB to power their respective AC bus, which you can see here. This is AC bus 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the sequence is from the IDG, which is the generator and the constant speed drive, through the generator control switch, which automatically closes and opens to power the AC bus. The AC bus then will provide power through the bus tie switch to hook up to the synchronous bus. And these are all alike power sources, so they can synchronize. What's not represented is that there's an SSB right in the middle here. That split system breaker would open and close as necessary to connect like power sources. In this case, since we have external 1 and external 2 on, the SSB would be open at this point. External 1 powering the left side, external 2 powering the right side, and they'd be completely separate systems at this point. But once you start the engines, then the engines will take over, external power will disconnect automatically, and the eventually when all four engines are running, the SSB would close. The bus tie switches, we talked about these, they are in the auto position. That's the normal position. We don't, very uh, often we don't mess with these switches unless a procedure calls for it. These switches again will automatically allow the bus tie to open and close as necessary to isolate faults. It uh, also controls the DCIRs, the DC isolation relays. So if you were to take this out of the auto position, you're opening the DCIRs and now the uh, DC tie bus would not receive power from the respective DC bus. So these switches normally left in auto, that allows the DCIRs to be closed and that allows the bus tie switch to close automatically when the IDG powers the AC bus and then the AC bus can provide uh, power to the synchronous bus. Again, we have uh, four sources of AC power on the ground, external one, external two, or APU one and APU two if you start the APU. In this case, we have started the APU, so you can see the avail lights. That would indicate the frequency and volts are good, and it's available for use. Right now, if we were to take external one and bring on uh, APU generator one, that would simply replace external one. The SSB would remain open, and APU generator one would power the left side, and then external two would power the right side. The battery switch, when it's on, that will allow power to come from the uh, four buses, the, the two hot battery buses and the two um, battery buses. So there's hot battery buses that even if the battery is not connected, those items on the hot battery bus are powered automatically. Uh, when you turn the switch on, you're not only getting power from the two hot battery buses, but also from the battery buses as well. The standby power selector we talked about, auto AC3. If it AC3 fails, switches to AC1. If AC1 fails, switches to the battery automatically. Two utility uh, switches up here. These control what are called the ELCUs, electronic load control units. On a freighter, uh, you only have uh, a couple of utility buses. On the passenger airplanes, you not only have utility buses, but you have galley buses as well. And they are connected through electrical load control units, and the electrical load control units will automatically shed power as necessary to protect the electrical system. 
These are high draw items, so anything on a utility bus or a galley bus will be a high draw item. And uh, there is a sequence as to how these shed. Uh, for example, you have uh, bus one, two, three, and four, and you have utility and galley buses one, two, three, and four. And if uh, the power output from a utility or a galley bus becomes too much for the electrical system, it'll start shedding loads, and it does it in a priority order. So depending on what it chooses to uh, take off first, uh, it may take off something from utility and galley bus number three, for example, first, and it would shed three first, and then maybe one, and then two, and then four. Uh, it does it in its logical order to try to reduce the load on the system. When the load on the system is reduced, and then it can start restoring, and usually it restores in reverse order. So if it, if it went uh, 4, 3, 2, 1, then it would restore 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. And the APU, of course, switch will allow you to start the APU, go from the off to the on to the start position. The um, overhead maintenance panel, we normally would check this uh, during our cockpit setup uh, and we'd make sure there are no lights and the guards are closed. The only light you might see would be the split system breaker open light. And this is the light that will tell you if the SSB is open or closed. You can also see this on the synoptic. There'll be a representation of the SSB in the synoptic. You cannot see it on the electrical overhead panel. And so if you have unlike power sources, meaning you have APU1 and APU2 or external 1 and external 2 hooked up, you would expect to see this open light illuminated. If you only had external 1 providing power to the synchronous bus, then the SSB would be closed and that light would be extinguished. Field uh, reset switches. These normally should be dark or blank, guards closed. If you see a field off light, that would mean that one of the generator control uh, fields, one of the generator fields is open. This could be because a fire switch has been pulled or a generator control switch is in the off position. The generator um, control switch, we didn't mention this on the overhead panel, but that switch really has two functions. And one is to automatically allow the generator control breaker to open and close. As the IDG comes up to speed, the GCB will automatically close. But if the switch is in the on position, then that will allow the uh, field to be closed automatically, and this light would go out. So we do check that all these lights are extinguished. If one of them were on like this, we'd probably get maintenance. We could see if a fire switch is in. We could try to reset the generator control switch to see if that helps. And if that didn't help, we'd call maintenance. Here's a representation of the electrical synoptic. Again, it looks very similar to the overhead panel, except now you've got some interactivity to it because you've got flow of electrical power You've got whether buses are powered or not. You've got green flow lines that you don't have on the overhead panel. In this case, you can see the engines are not running, so the IDG is not producing uh, generation power. And the generator control switch then would be open, and the off light would be illuminated on the overhead panel, and it shows off on the synoptic. However, we do have external one. We do have external two. The SSB is open because these are not like power sources. External 1 is powering AC1 and AC2. Uh, APU, uh, sorry, external 2 is powering um, AC3 and AC4. And all four utility buses are powered. Uh, if this were a passenger airplane, it would also show galley uh, buses powered as well. And that's through those ELCUs, those electrical load control units. We'll look more at this in the virtual simulator. During Autoland, 
uh, normally what the electrical system does is it would isolate AC bus 1, 2, and 3 and uh, that would keep um, separate power sources for each of the autopilots and uh, AC bus 4 would, con would continue to power the synchronous bus and uh, that's a normal operation to occur during auto land at 1500 feet when you see land 3 and unseated that means that at that point the electrical system is isolated so that uh, we're no longer everything's connected to the sync bus uh, AC bus 1 is separate from AC 2 is separate from AC 3 4 would power the synchronous bus and all three autopilots then would have separate power sources now if you were to look at the electrical synoptic you might see something like this and it would look like something's wrong uh, and that's not the case because that's a normal operation for one two and three to isolate at this point so as a result instead of seeing this what you're seeing on the screen right now you would see this if you tried to bring up the electrical synoptic and you pushed pushed electric on the synoptic display, uh, you would see electrical synoptic inhibited for auto land. That would be what it would say. And the electrical synoptic is removed because it doesn't want to show you what looks like a non-normal condition and it's really not during auto land. So that's why they inhibit it. You'll see that again at land three when you see on your PFD land three flare and roll out below approximately 1500 then if you were to reach up and go to electrical, you will see that the electrical synoptic cannot be displayed because of that very reason that they don't want you thinking that something is wrong. Okay, let's go to the virtual simulator and we'll look at some of the electrical components uh, in practice. Okay, we're in the uh, virtual simulator. We've got the electrical synoptic pulled up next to the uh, overhead panel portion of the electrical system. You'll notice they look very similar because they are an AC representation of the uh, jet. Uh, DC power really is not shown at all. You'll notice right now the battery switch is on so that means we have all four uh, battery buses powered. The hot battery buses and the main battery buses for the EPU and the main battery are powered. Uh, external power one right now is supplying power to all four AC buses and the split system breaker is closed as you see on the electrical synoptic. This is the configuration we want to be in if we were on a freighter, which we are, and they were loading the uh, airplane, the main deck, uh, with cargo. In order to operate the uh, nose cargo door and the side cargo door, and the cargo handling equipment and the cargo lights and all of the equipment that's on there you'd have to have the main deck handling bus powered and that's we said that was powered by APU 2 or external 2 and it has to be available and in this case you can see that it's available it's not selected on and so that way the main deck handling bus is powered if we were to select external power 2 like we're doing now the split system breaker would open, external 1 would power uh, AC bus 1 and 2, external 2 would power AC bus 3 and 4, and the SSB is open. At this point we would disrupt any cargo uh, loading that was going on in the main deck and they would be pretty pretty upset with us and they would probably give us a call and say what are you guys doing. So if we have one power source like we do right now, we'd have to keep external power to available and not on in order to uh, complete cargo loading. Now, of course, if we start the APU, let's go ahead and start that, and we get APU generator 1 and APU generator 2 running, and they're available, then I could select external power 2. wouldn't matter because APU generator 2 would be available and that would be providing power to the main deck handling bus. In this case, let's go back on with external 2. And you'll notice again the SSB is open. You can see it here, and you can also see it 
if we go up to the um, overhead maintenance panel and uh, we can see the SSB open light here as well. Uh, this would display that it's open and this would display that it's open. Those are the only two places you really see it uh, displayed. If we go back to the overhead panel and you'll notice uh, as the APU comes up to speed you will get the available lights displayed. The avail lights would indicate that the frequency and voltage are acceptable. And there they are. So this would indicate that the power is acceptable for use and it is selectable at this time. Now the fact that we have external two selected on but we have a veil means that they could continue loading with no problem in this configuration. Notice if I select AP generator one, it's just going to replace external two. So we'd expect to see green flow line here and this green flow line go away. And all it is is a replacement of power. And because these are unlike power sources, the SSB would remain open. APU generator one is powering AC bus one and two. External two is powering uh, AC bus three and four. Let's bring generator two on. And again, you notice it just replaces external two. And now APU one and two are powering all four AC buses. The uh, drive disconnect switch is a guarded switch. It's uh, in the airplane, it's safety wired, so you'd have to break the wire, lift the guard, and push the switch if you had a non normal in flight. It is a momentary action switch uh, along with external and APU. Uh, these are the only momentary action switches on the electrical panel. Everything else is a alternate action switch, like the bus tie switches, the generator control switches, the battery switch and the utility switches and of course standby power and APU or rotary switches. The drive light right now is illuminated because you have low oil pressure within the IDG because the engines are not running so that's illuminated. Right now the off light is illuminated in the generator control switch because the generator control breaker the GCB is open. And in order for it to close, you'd have to start the engine. The IDG would, the constant speed drive would start running. It would power the generator. The generator would provide uh, power through the GCB. The GCB would close. And then uh, that would go ahead and power the AC bus. And then, of course, the AC bus is going to go through the bus die breaker, which would uh, normally be automatically closed at this point in order to power the synchronous bus. This generator control switch really does two things. It controls the field and it controls the breaker. So right now the breaker is open and the field is closed. If I were to take a generator control switch and turn it off, let's do that with number three. Let me go turn this off for a second. If I were to do that, that would open the field. If I were to pull a fire switch, let's do that, that would open a field. And if you go back up to the, uh, let me find it, if you go back up to the overhead maintenance panel, you'll now see that uh, for engine three, the field off light is illuminated on three and four uh, because I pushed the generator control switch off and that opened the field and I pulled a fire switch and that opened the field. If I go back down to the overhead panel which is uh, where to go there it is and I go ahead and push generator control switch back on well let's uh, unfreeze the simulator I push that on and I push the fire switch back in and then I go back up to the overhead panel. Overhead maintenance panel. You'll see that number three field off light uh, extinguished because we closed the field. But even though we pushed the fire switch in, we still have a field off light here. 
So what we have to do is go back to the overhead and we have to actually reset the field. We can do that with the GCB with a generator control switch. So we can turn it off. This fire switch is in again. We pushed it in. We can turn it off and back on again. And then if we go back up to the overhead panel, maintenance panel, you'll see the field off light is extinguished now. Let's go back to overhead. So that one switch does two things. You know, it used to be in the old classic 747. There used to be, back on the flight engineer's panel, these used to be separate switches, one for the generator control breaker and, and another toggle switch for the, uh, the field. And now with an automated airplane like the 400 or the Dash 8, the Dash 8 is what we're in now, um, this is completely automated in the sense that there's one switch, but it really does two functions. It controls the field and the breaker. The bus tie, as we said, the bus tie switches are an auto. They allow the bus tie breakers to close and allow the AC bus to connect up with the synchronous bus. If I were to take the AC, uh, the bus tie switches and bring them out of auto, uh, you'll notice that uh, in this case we've isolated the, the AC bus from the synchronous bus. The utility bus is unpowered, that's showing in amber. And at this point you've not only opened up the bus tie breaker, but you've also opened up the DCIR, the DC isolation relay as well. It's not closed anymore. These have to be in auto in order for the DCIRs to be closed. Bring it back to auto and that allows the bus tie breaker to close again and the AC bus can now power the synchronous bus and uh, you're back in business. Looking at the utility switches, there's two of them but they're for all four AC buses, one, two, three, and four. They control the uh, electrical load on the airplane automatically. These electrical load control units, in this case we're in a freighter, so we don't see galley buses. If we're in a passenger airplane, you'd have the galley. And those four electrical load control units will uh, automatically shed. If I were to turn off a utility power switch, you notice the off light illuminates, and you'll see that both utility buses on the uh, left side, on AC1 and AC2, are unpowered. This would also unpower the galleys in a passenger airplane. Uh, when they do load shed, you don't see any indication of load shedding here at all. The off light would not illuminate, but it would go ahead and load shed. You'd see amber lights. If you happen to be looking at the synoptic, you would see amber lights on uh, whatever sheds first. So as I said, it's a priority logic. It might shed like 2, 4, 1, and 2. And then, you know, again, it might only shed 1 if it needs to. And then if the load is good, it doesn't have to shed anymore. But uh, if it has to, it'll continue shedding items to protect the uh, load capability of the airplane. Whatever order it sheds in, it will uh, restore in reverse order. Let's go ahead and bring on APU Generator 2 again. And as we talked about, the standby power is in auto, and that means that right now AC3 is powering the standby AC and the APU standby bus. But it's standing by in case AC3 fails, it'll go to AC1. If AC1 fails, then the main battery will power the uh, standby AC and APU uh, standby bus. Uh, if we were to take the switch, we can probably take a look at this. Let's go down to the, um, this should probably work okay, I think. Let's go down here and select the uh, status page. And then we'll go back upstairs. And you'll notice that if we were to go to the off position, that would mean the standby AC 
um, buses would not be powered. You'll get ICAST message for the, uh, messages for that saying that they aren't powered. If we go to the battery position, that would make the main battery power the standby buses, and it cuts out the battery chargers. So if you happen to be looking here at the uh, main and APU uh, batteries, you know, right now they are uh, charging. Uh, actually, the main battery is not charging, but the APU battery is charging. But if I were to go to battery, I'd expect to see that the uh, system will start to discharge because we'd be uh, drawing right off the battery. So let's see if it does that. If I go to battery, there they are. They are discharging now, minus signs in front of it. And we've cut out the battery chargers, so the battery is directly powering the standby buses, but the batteries are not being charged anymore. So we're drawing strictly off the batteries at this point. This is primarily a maintenance function. It's not so much a flight crew function in the air at all. Let's go back to auto, and you see now that, uh, again, we've got a good charge going on for the uh, main and APU battery now. Uh, and again, AC3 is powering the uh, standby buses at this point. So let's go back downstairs and select the uh, back to the electrical. And then we'll go upstairs and we're going to go ahead and uh, start the engines to see what happens. So uh, we'll bring number four to aux, number one, two, three to auto. Um, let's see, the fuel pumps are going, everything's pretty much going. We'll turn two packs off, the beacon's on, fuel pumps are already configured. Uh, let me move this down just a tad so I can see the start switches. We'll go ahead and start uh, three and four. And they're in the way here too. Let's move that. We'll start uh, four and three. And we'll move it uh, back. And we'll go back upstairs. Let's make sure that's. Uh, Just make sure that's starting okay. It is. Go back to the electrical, and then we'll go back upstairs. Notice the IDGs have started to operate. The GCBs have not closed yet because the engine's not running yet. It's turning. And that's why you see these, there's no drive or temperature or pressure light in here anymore. Just white boxes. But as the engine continues to run and continues to start, at a certain point the generator, the IDG, will the generator portion will start to uh, close the generator control breaker to power the AC bus. So we'll see that happen here in a second as the engine starts. It sounds like they're spooling up. And you can see on the dash 8 again, we talked about this in engine starting. Uh, the dash 8 will take much longer to start than the uh, 747-400. And now you can see the GCBs have just closed. The off-light extinguishes. And we have power now from the IDG through the generator control breaker to power AC bus 3. And notice that kicked off uh, APU generator 2. So now engine 3 and 4 are powering the right side of the synchronous bus. The SSB is still open because these are unlike power sources. APU 1 is powering the left side of the uh, synchronous bus and supplying power to AC bus 1 and 2. So now let's go ahead and uh, start uh, 1 and 2. And we'll go ahead and start one and two. And we'll take a look at that just to make sure it's uh, starting okay. Got auto start, that's good. It's in the process. Go back to electrical. 
We'll move this over a little bit. And we'll go back upstairs. And now we should see the IDGs, they're starting to turn. And you can see that the amber indications here went away. And as the engine comes up to speed, the generator breakers will close. They will allow the uh, IDG to power the AC buses. It'll kick off APU1. And then these will go ahead and synchronize themselves with each other because they are like power sources. They'll be in phase with each other. And then the SSB will close. And the all the engines then will through the IDGs will be powering the synchronous bus all in phase with each other. So we'll watch that happen. You'll see these turn green and you'll see that kick off the APU. Of course none of that represented here except that you'll see the off lights extinguish and you'll see this on light extinguish. Go to available, there it goes. And the SSB now would close and you can see it here and now everything's in phase. Everything's available up here. We could have them remove external power, and we would go with our flow, which would turn off the APU and do the rest of the flow patterns. You can see any of that on my tutorials of flow patterns uh, and uh, engine starting as well to, uh, that goes over all the starting parameters for the engines. So this is how the electrical system would look in flight. And then, of course, when we get on the ground and we pull up to the gate and we're ready to shut down, we would normally then select external, if we're in a freighter like we are now, select external one. And you see external one now is going to take over the left side of the synchronous bus. Engine three and four still powering the right side of the synchronous bus. And then we could go down and shut down the engines. And, of course, we do our flow pattern. Uh, first, which would be to go to aux and turn these off, 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 and then normally the captain would then shut down the engines. So we'll go ahead and do that, just to watch that. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice that, go back upstairs. You notice the as the engines shut down now, we're going to have the uh, lights start to appear. The GCBs will all close on engine three and four especially. The IDGs are no longer being uh, spun up by the engines, and external one is now powering both sides of the uh, synchronous bus. The SSB closed, and this is how you'd want to stay while they um, unload the airplane. Again, if you had started the APU uh, and you switched over to APU and then they plugged in uh, external power, then again you could do the same thing we talked about earlier, and that is you could uh, select external power to and then as long as you have APU generator 2 available, that's good enough. They can unload the airplane in that configuration. So in a freighter, you have to be a little more diligent with this side of the uh, synchronous bus to make sure that that main deck handling bus remains powered. On a passenger airplane, you don't have to worry about it because you don't have a main deck uh, cargo handling equipment. You have lower lobes, and those lower lobes as long as external one or APU one is available uh, or selected on, doesn't matter, then the uh, forward cargo door and the aft cargo door and the bulk cargo door can be operated uh, as long as one of these is available or on, like you see here. But now we'd have no problem powering the main deck handling bus. So with that, that completes the electrical system. Um, there's actually a little more detail to it, but uh, that's um, pretty much would provide you with a good understanding 
of the electrical system. So until next time, thanks for watching. Until our next briefing, keep the blue side up. Captain Al, out.